Yo, what is going on YouTube? Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. And today, we're going to be just talking about Umoja. We're going to be going back over her history, talking about buffs, nerfs that have happened, just talking about her. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you guys do, make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and yeah, hope you guys enjoy it. Yamojo was originally released October 15th, 2019. She's been ruining my games for three years. However, for you, it's probably different. She probably hasn't been ruining your games for all that long. For the first year of her lifetime, maybe year and a half, two years, she might have been in your games a lot, winning the games. And that is the story of Yamojo. She's been dominant in pro play and horrible in anything else. Top two, top five in pro, bottom five, bottom two in casuals and in most levels of ranked. Going back to when Yamojo was released, she was very, very well received by the pro players for this high skill ceiling god that just allowed for a lot of outplay, a lot of peel potential, a lot of saving your teammates, a lot of saving yourself, and a lot of just skill expression. You just were able to do a lot of things with a kit that most other gods in Smite at that time and even now, they just don't have that same playmaking potential, either offensive or defensive. One of the big reasons along with that was she just had a lot of aspects to her kit that were just brand new to any god in Smite. She had autos that hit teammates, increasing healing they got, a passive that allows you to spam abilities, up to a point and then she was also one of the few gods that didn't use mana obviously there's other gods that didn't use mana but she was this brand new resource called omi and maybe that was the problem looking back maybe there's too many things that added to her kit allowed her skill ceiling to go a lot higher than other gods that was the problem and allowed pros to abuse it that the average player and even like the higher level players couldn't abuse let's take a look at her kit and just see currently in season nine three years after her release how strong her kit remains emoji currently has her omi passive it has changed a lot through its time and auto her autos and how mana changes to her omi and levels for her omi changed a lot through the years but looking at it right now she just gains omi every level she gains one omi every five seconds cooldown reduction increases her omi regeneration and she actually gets an additional omi every five levels starting at level 6 11 16. her basic attacks also heal and she gets health conversion based off her mana her one essentially say the same thing the stats or the the numbers have been changed a little bit but it's been essentially the same thing her two same thing the numbers have changed a lot but it's essentially still the same thing three stayed the same movement speed protections a slow for enemies the ring duration did recently get cut in half and then her ultimate really has not been changed that much uh it was changed originally way 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 back when she was originally released it was changed to four seconds from leaving the area instead of just eight seconds after casting her ultimate her kit allows her to heal teammates without using an ability it allows her to slow and stun multiple times in a row she can stack healing and shields on top of just one two maybe three people if they're grouped she can peel for her teammates and give them movement speed and protections or slow down enemies or kick them back to her. And then she can wall off enemies, blocking autos, blocking movement abilities. And the only way to get out of it is phantom shell or jumping it. As you can see, her kit just does a lot. And this doesn't even go back to the times when she was actually incredibly OP, when she was released, when she had literally more things in her kit than any other character in the game had ever seen. Looking at Mo Yamoja's pre-release, her basic attacks used to heal her for twice as much per level or heal teammates for twice as much. She used to get healing increased buff to teammates that were autoed to 20%. Her bubble damage was increased, actually. The, the bubble was seen as like not as great as the other abilities, so it was actually buffed along with Moonstrike. And this has been the most insane thing that I've seen. Increased shield damage multiplier, not this part, right here. Reduced heal from 50 to 250. And then the shield from 50 to 250. Thank goodness they changed this in pre-release. But Yamoja could spam abilities she could spam them like eight times because of her ult 500 health and shield absolutely crazy just even thinking about that it's 300 200 shield 100 health now but thinking just 500 imagine that and then this is what i was talking about the buff used to just be eight seconds after casting your ultimate and then it was changed to four seconds after entering the area which is a nice change it makes you actually, actually play around your ult and you can't just drop ult and then leave it and still get the benefits so it's a good change after about a year of emoji being in pro play she started getting these really big sweeping nerfs reducing damage reducing the shielding reducing the healing reducing the passive reducing the ultimate cooldown her ultimate used to be 100 second cooldown 110 to 120 on july 13th 2021 what is this two three months later 120 to 140 where it sits now losing the 10% healing buff she gets from basic attacks. She used to have a healing buff all the way up until September 7th, 2021. The shield used to stack with itself, 
removed. The bounce range used to be 50 instead of 40. And then getting to the most recent nerfs, Riptide used to last six seconds. It, it used to be a wall almost, or you'd have to beads for six seconds. Now it's three. The slow used to be 20. Now it's 10. And then the slow that applied to enemies used to be 90%. Now it's 60%. Yamojis had these massive, massive, massive nerfs, nerfs, and she is still one of the top gods in pro play. This is Yamojis' first season being available in pro play, season eight, which is last year. Look at all of her stats. This is by Blues Ultra. Absolutely fantastic. If you're interested in Smite Pro stats, anything like that, Blues Ultra on Twitter. He releases stuff after patches. Absolutely great follow on Twitter. Top two on Twitter after me. Follow him. Yamoja in pick rate over all of season eight. Three. Now let's think about why she was three. Oh, it's because she was the number one ban rate at 60%. Her pick ban rate through an entire year, one entire year, was 87, almost 88% through the entire year. She was played 127 times, won 60% of the times, so her win rate was 14th. But also think, there was teams that were picking her and losing that were just obviously worse, like... My team through most of the year was not the greatest. She was still 14th in win rate. Going into this year, the story is pretty much the same. I couldn't find the stats for any of the Emoja stuff. Uh, this one was just, I found it on a random Reddit thread, but it's pretty much the same. Emoja has been banned nearly every game. She's been picked in any game she's not banned. She's been first picked, second picked. Looking even at Worlds, Season 8 Worlds, look at her. Ban, first side. Picked, second side. Picked, second side. She was dominating last year's Worlds, last year's Finals. Every every game she's available, she is just dominating. And the story's gonna be pretty much the same this year at this Worlds. She's gonna be picked, she's gonna be banned, she's gonna be top two support guaranteed. It really comes down to how people value her versus Ma Maui and all of his buffs. It's, it's really just gonna be a coin flip. I personally think Maui is very, very slightly better, but I think it is very, very close. And it really just comes to Maui getting these massive buffs that were catered towards casual players players, but SPL players can abuse. But now at this point, the question just has to be asked. Is Yamoja a reworkable character? She's been absolutely unnerfable at the SPL level, and she is unplayable at the casual level. Yamoja, 43.99% win rate. Yamoja, 45% win rate. Yamoja, 44% win rate. And even now, 9.12, the patch we're going to be playing Worlds on. Yamoja, 44% win rate. So is it about time that we rework Yamoja? She's been dominating pros. She's been getting dominated in casuals. 44, 45, 46% win rate in casuals. Almost 60% win rates in pro play. Her kid is very abusable. So I think we have to take a serious look at her and see what we need to remove from her, what we need to change with her to bring her into a more even standing with both of them do we have to take a look at her omi maybe remove her omi and make it mana and then buffer kit that way do we have to remove her auto attacks being able to heal teammates maybe her three only working against teammates and not working against enemies or only working against enemies and not against teammates another cool thing that i've seen with the emoji alt is making it so it's just one wall last idea i kind of have is making autos and abilities go through her wall and make it just not a true wall in that way. Maybe make it a wall that just blocks enemies and they can't walk through it. But what do you guys think? Do you guys think it is about time Yamoja gets a rework? Do you guys like how she feels right now? Do you guys think she needs to be changed? What would you rework if you even would? Let me know what you guys think. Give me your thoughts below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Yamoja have been very volatile, been talked about a lot. She's been probably the most talked about character in all of Smite over the past three years because pro players love talking about her because of how divisive she is. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. See you guys again next time. Peace.